motherhood, but not quite as we imagine. Thought-provoking, refreshing, straightforward, sometimes taboo. Often seemingly ordinary, but always honest. Welcome to School for Mothers, opening conversations we all need to have, exploring ways in which you can be fulfilled as a woman, once a mother. Now, here is your host, mother of 10, Danusha Melina Durban. Hello and welcome back to the School for Mothers podcast. I'm Danusha Melina Durban, your host. Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the School for Mothers podcast, Susie. I'm really looking forward to, given the context, look, you know, actually talking about overcoming challenges. Hello, how are you? Hello, Denisha. Thank you so much for having me. I'm great, thank you. I'm really good. I'm really excited. Good. Well, we're obviously talking at a time when we've had a year of this pandemic and therefore so many challenges, so many different ones for different mothers. And I'm wondering, how has it been for you? How is it? So the children have just gone back um, two days ago now, and I'm just going through that, what is it, the third adjustment again, just trying to return to some sort of normality. It's been a really challenging year. The business that I run is all focused on days out, and it's a hospitality and tourism industry. So every single time we've gone into a a lockdown sort of situation, my business is basically brought to an immediate halt in in that regard. So it's just been, it has been literally challenge after challenge. We've, we've had three lockdowns, therefore my business has basically paused three times. And of course, as a mum of three, um, that then just gets replaced with either homeschooling or having the children home permanently while then trying to sort of rebuild as much as you can, it, you know, your business around that whole little enterprise you're trying to run with the children's homeschooling as well. So it has been one hell of a year, I'll be honest. It's been a proper challenge mentally, physically. I've never, I, I felt yesterday, the second day that they've been back at school, that I just felt so exhausted. And one, one thought I thought was, like, actually, are you, are you poorly? And I thought, but no, this is what exhaustion feels like. This is actually it, which is sort of a relief because I don't want to be poorly. Literally, there's no time for poorly. So, <laughs> so yes. Yeah. So, I mean, there's what I can hear is the there's the business and then there's the kids and you. Yeah. You know, I mean, all those, all those, and I'm, I know there's more, isn't there? There's relationship and the house and, you know, I mean, there's so much more. But just in what you just said, it's like, the requirement to constantly change your strategy literally overnight, um, exactly. three times. Then the kids, three times. You having to keep yourself up and at it and resilient all the way through this. I mean, do you feel that you were equipped before for this? In honesty, um, we had had a challenging little period before the pandemic even started, um, before this even became a thing last year. In about 20, in late 2018, we had our third child and we'd had a, a, an up, a bit of an up and down um, in 2017 um, as well with a sort of a health issue. But that sort of ran its course. We fell pregnant again and um, unexpectedly. Um, but just before my third child was born, um, my husband unfortunately was made redundant and it was the third time a redundancy had happened to him. Within that year following the redundancy, he started to build his own business. So we were both then running our own businesses, but then quite quickly um, out of nowhere, his father passed away in the July. Mm. So as a sort of run up to the pandemic, it was almost like I was given a bit of a trial run in resilience, um, if I'm completely honest. Um, and I haven't felt the, the pandemic, I don't think as harshly as maybe some others who really did have their lives completely thrown around and turned upside down. Although I 100% say that my life has been thrown around and turned upside down by the pandemic as well, in the, in the same way that every other parent has had that um, and any other business owner as well. And every other person, I mean, literally every single person in the world has been affected. But I felt that I have had to build the resilience, I guess, um, and the build, have had the building blocks in place for quite some time. Um, for a long time, I think, while my husband was going through the challenges that us, that surround losing a father and losing a job, you know, a few times, it just crushed his confidence and absolutely had an, a huge impact on family life. He's since rebuilt in a, 
in a way that I am so proud. He's built his own business, but we then have both then been running our own business throughout this entire time. Um, so running a business pre-pandemic, um, I was trying to you know raise a, a baby, a, the third one, while still building Wiki, um, while also trying to sort of hold and manage him if that makes sense so it felt mm-hmm. like at one point that I had four quite needy dependents um while I was also my fifth little baby which is wiki you know was needed to be nurtured and needed my time as well so although I'd absolutely say that I've built even more resilience around the the pandemic I've had to build and grab a strength from somewhere over the last three year, few years anyway in order to be able to cope at all just to be able to handle everyday life just to be able to keep going at certain times it's it was so tough I, I haven't been sure how I have kept going to be honest how I've kept showing up for the family and kept wiki going especially during this pandemic but there have been you know with anybody starting a new business you have the ups and downs but sometimes the downs have been seriously harsh you know being being in the hospitality industry right now and the days out business just to have it all literally taken away um when it whenever it was went into lockdown i think it was almost this time last year wasn't it it just was like swiped away and i've had to constantly go through these moments of oh my god what the fuck am i going to do is it over and I've had to think, is it over in so many different ways? You know, in the last few years, sometimes I've had to wonder about my marriage, my relationship, is it over? We've had some real moments where we felt desperately sad, I suppose, and worried and you know, crushed financially. And when you're building a business, when both of you are building a business, that constant instability is so damaging to, to your relationship and to your own mental health. I'm trying again to rebuild I, I j- just before we went live with this this morning I just told you that I was just dancing around the kitchen and I put my music really loud and I dressed up in my hmm. best dress today just because actually all of those things make me feel like I'm showing up like I'm um you know turning up for myself today and um and they make me feel good and like I'm present and, and that, I, that I'm also running a business. It's very easy post-pandemic to stay in your companies and, uh, you know, and walk, go around the house in your PJs all day. And I, and I absolutely have done that too. But I have to find ways uh, that really just build my confidence and my strength and my positivity. And my whole thing is I just love to bring the light. I just love to bring positivity to any situation. And I think I've had to find tool after tool after tool to be able to do that for myself as well as now for others. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it, the precursor to this pandemic has truly triggered that kind of, yeah, building your resilience muscles and c- helping you find tools through, you know, the grief and the, uh, and supporting your husband and loss of jobs and dual startups with several kids. I mean, three children, but uh, I can't help noticing how you've got lots of threes. Threes are a theme, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I just, I just, uh, I think more, or is it not? <laughs> I'm wondering now. <laughs> I just, I, I just heard it as you were speaking. It's like, whoa, you've got threes. And I, and I can't help it as a triplet mother, you know, because threes are obviously uh, a, a big theme for us. You know, we, I always have to buy three of everything, three I mean, literally, it's it's gosh, it's expensive, but I always have to I always have to think in threes for the trips. So yeah, I mean that dual startup with three kids and a pandemic and trying, as you say, to build confidence, to keep confidence, to find tools to to keep buoyed up, to keep kind of keep going. As you said, actually, the words keep showing up, keep showing up. <laughs> It's one of the biggest lessons. Like I, I love Brenny Brown's piece where she talks about show up, get your ass kicked. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but basically step back up, get back up. And and I really like the distinction that she makes with, you know, show up. She doesn't say kick ass. She says, get your ass kicked. And she always makes the the point that if you're not getting your ass kicked, if you're not putting yourself so forward in life that you actually, that either people take a pot shot at you. She was really, we were in New York um, together a few years ago and she talked about this and I've held on to it because it isn't just that we do the kicking ass, that we actually, we are so significant that actually we take the, the knock. 
But the trick is that we have to keep getting back up, getting back up. And and that's really what you're talking about, isn't it? It's like, we do wonder, oh, you know, is this, is this over? Is this over? Not just in a pandemic, but is this it? Is, is this where it breaks? And it sounds like you've been through a lot of those breaking points, but kept getting back up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting, actually, as you say that I also love Brené Brown, absolutely love her. My third child, Lily, I feel has been heaven sent. I, honestly, to God, and I might, it makes me, I can feel the emotion coming up now. I honestly feel that she is an angel on earth and she was sent to help me through this. And it is through her that I have constantly got up and shown up for myself. Everything that preceded 20, like, that started at the end of 2018 and then has come since has been such an enormous challenge for everyone. But I, I feel it acutely because of the things that were happening with the personal in, the, in our personal life as well. I mean, just before the pandemic actually kicked off in March last year, I it was the worst point that it ever got to. I, I felt that my husband might be having a breakdown. Mm. I felt that everything had got to a pinnacle of desperation. But Lily has literally been my saving grace. And she wasn't expected. And I do believe she was a miracle. And she actually got me up, obviously, every day as a newborn will. Got me up at night, um, got me through the day. She gave me purpose. And that isn't to say that my other two children didn't give me purpose, because of course I love them with all my heart. But the needs of a newborn are different. She relied on me literally to survive. And I honestly, to God, I thank God for this, because Lily gave me that day-to-day purpose, the reason to get up, to show up, to keep myself well, to keep eating. You know, I breastfed her um, as well at the beginning, which meant that she, you know, I needed to keep myself as hydrated and, and, and fit as I possibly could. But actually, on top of all that, and it makes it sound like I'm I was a miserable person. I really wasn't. She brings the light, and I cannot explain how, but she really does. She is just such a joy and I, I I truly believe that she got me through and she continues to get me through I, I had a session with a with a lady um within this last year who um I won't go into too much detail because it's quite a spiritual thing but she, I asked whether Lily had been a had been my daughter in a previous life because I felt a connection to her that I just couldn't explain and she said I'm not getting that but what I am getting was that she was your mum in a previous life mm. oh my goodness sorry making my making me shake and as soon as she said that mm. I really truly got it that that makes sense I feel so protected so looked after so connected with her that it makes sense and she has truly got me through she got me up every day I you know as well as the children obviously getting to school it's not just about Lily but it was just something that got delivered to me by the divine as far as I'm concerned to get me through this really, really harsh, challenging time. And during um, the, I guess it was 2019, actually, I definitely found a peace um, with God. Um, I, I'd never really connected um, with religion really before. I have always been a really spiritual person, but um, a friend of mine invited me to the Easter service. And literally from then, I just, I, I felt a massive connection to source, um, you know, I don't, I interchange what you call it as far as I'm concerned, um, but my connection is definitely with a greater being. And that also, I massively, massively lent into my spirituality throughout this process. And that also, in a way, put a strain on things with my husband to an extent, because he, although coming from a Catholic background, is definitely not leaning in to his spiritual side. And then I can see how for somebody who isn't doing that, when your wife who you've known for 10 years suddenly starts becoming a bit bop, bop, ding, ding, you know, a little bit too kind of airy fairy and, you know, maybe you should ask God for that. You know, maybe you should ask God for help with your job interview. You know, how fucking annoying I can see that. Um, (laughs) But for me, it's been a massive thing. It's a huge thing. And when I say this morning, I was dancing around the kitchen, I stuck on my favorite song from Bethel music, (laughs) which just, honestly fills me up with so much joy and optimism and I just know I have the you know the universe has my back is it I is really it gospel do. is it a Bethel music is it a gospel piece 
not particularly. I, um, okay. It's almost like I love uh, Goodness of God is one of my favorites. Um, I guess that it's a um, it's Christian rock, if you want to call it that. But that sounds like some horrific band at the beginning at the front of your old, you know, old school church. It's really not like that. It's just really uplifting, great music. Like it's it's if you. You, it could literally be a number one, you know. It's um, it's it's that good. Um, but maybe not in today's age because everything's all weird, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know what today's music's about. Thank God, I am. Gee, I'm sounding like my mum. But um, but yeah, I just feel that I over the last year or so, uh, I have just continually when I have not got the answers, and I rarely have these days. I'll be completely honest. I just have to trust so much that the, the universe has got my back when I le- really truly lean in and you know I'm, and I'm not talking about the uh, lean in sense of the, of the book um <laughs> oh, no. I lean- no surrender to the unknown totally when I surrender things work out they really do when I when I must try so hard to figure out what the end goal is or to or to or to be really clear on the outcome and, and sort of dogged about the outcome it actually becomes more of a fear um but if I just trust I just find that things work out for me if I just set my intention and just trust that they're happening like as if you put an order out to Amazon you don't sit back and go oh god I don't know if that's going to happen oh I better I better go out and try and source it myself anyway just in case Amazon doesn't deliver you just trust that Amazon's got it that it's got your back it's got your order and it's going to come in a couple of days you sit and trust and that's how I basically had to alter my the way I do things um and it is a huge step because I don't come from a family that believes in any of this it's um it's just something that resonated with me at a a time oh here I am my voice is wobbling again but this is how I feel so emotional about it the universe literally God literally came to me at a time when I was probably on my knees it must have been around April 2019 um six months in you know to my newborn journey six months after my husband lost his job was made redundant or you know as things happen and also quite close then to uh, my father-in-law passing and ever since then I have truly been in and I, I at times I I don't you know I almost forget my spiritual my spiritual side I get so caught up in my head I get so caught up in the to-do lists I get so caught up in in the in the state of my bank account or you know in in the in the real everyday things that I forget to trust and the more I forget the more I realize I'm going super like downhill at at a at a serious rate but when I remind myself you know to look into the light I guess and to be the light actually things really do change almost in the inst in an instant something really funny happened actually um this is a complete uh random thing but um I got a bit hung up lately on Instagram reels there's a new thing ish. I mean, it's been around for six months or so. Instagram Reels is their new tool, which they, um, yeah, like YouTube um, and TikTok. And I got a bit cross that people who had a very small following seem to be getting 880,000 views on a reel. And I kind of got really stuck on it for a while. I was like, why am I not getting this exposure? You know, I've got a great, I've got a good following. I think my content's good. And I started to get all kind of in my head about it and just really and, and negative actually. And kind of what I was putting out to the universe was, I want these big numbers. It's going to make, you know, it's going to make a massive difference to my business. It's going to really change my life. Surely if I can get 880 views on a video, I'm going to get, I'm going to get 880,000 followers. And, you know, there is my business is made. Anyway, clearly what the universe heard (laughs) was she wants to have a big video. You know, that's what she was hearing. I wasn't being clear about what my intention was my intention is not to have a video that hits 880,000 people my intention is to get my app and my business in front of every parent in the UK that it will make a difference to those parents that it will make a difference to the businesses and to the economy of our country and it will add value that is my intention but I wasn't saying that I was saying I want a massive Mm. video anyway lo and behold yesterday one of my videos has gone viral I quickly checked it this morning 220,000 views it's had so the universe has literally heard my request, popped it up there. Do you know how many followers I've had, Denisha? I've had about eight. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it crazy? <laughs> it's so interesting. And it's not like the universe is going, there you go, it's two fingers to you. What it is saying is I'm listening to you and I'm giving you what you want. But be clear about what you want. Because what you want is not 880,000 views on a video. You want to make a difference. You want to impact people's 
people change. And that wasn't what I was saying. And actually I got what I wanted, which was a massive video, but it has not made a single bit of difference to the awareness that I've got from my, the audience I want to reach. And I just, and it's a, it's a really great lesson to me. I was like, it's a beautiful lesson, isn't it? I'm so glad that you dissected that difference because it's so easy for us to have these, you know, to get, as you say, to get hooked into something and like, oh, why can't I do that? I'd like that when actually it doesn't really speak to our bigger mission in, in life. And of course, that's assuming that we have one, that we know that. Yeah. But if we do, then actually we've got to be really careful. I, I it's something I say to my team in our business um, be careful what, you know, I've got to watch what I say <laughs> because, because I manifest uh, so powerfully exactly. that it, that it, that it will come. So I have to be really super specific. In both the good and the bad way, right? So it's like you, yep. your language, you have to be really clear, clear, careful how, what you ask for, what you wish for. As they say, say, careful what you wish for. And also really careful about the language you use to ourselves and what we say about ourselves, because it, I truly agree with you that you, it's manifesting can be so powerful, but also in both directions. Yeah, no, it, it can be. I'm, I absolutely love that story. Completely adore it. It's, it's so nonsensical. So you've got, you've got the reach in terms of the vi- viral aspect of it, but it hasn't actually made much difference in terms of your followership. And therefore, that kind of more solid, substantial reach and an accomplishment of your real big mission that's like <laughs> be well beyond the transitory nature of a video. It's, it's fascinating that, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I love I love the difference between your what I would think of as a kind of a hustle, push, try to maybe manipulate, do do what you can to make something happen and surrender. Like uh, be clear about what you want, offer it up to the universe mm. and have the universe sorted. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Really big difference. <laughs> and I know both of us are in Clubhouse a lot and I'm, I'm going to remember to put our Clubhouse handles in the show notes for everyone, um, a, as well as obviously, you know, your Insta and all that. That'll all be there. <laughs> but I've just while I'm thinking about it, the Clubhouse, I mean, there's a very big difference between some rooms uh, of this kind of hustle feel and the not so hustle feel <laughs> or the ones that just don't have any hustle in them at all. How are you finding it? Absolutely. Yeah. I find that I have actually been steering very clear of those rooms that seem to be quite egoic. Mm -hmm. The big bravado, um, you know, as soon as someone jumps on, they're talking about what they can do for you and, you know, the the, the quite salesy um, bravado element of it. Not really into that. I just... I personally love the rooms where you feel genuine connection and you resonate with what people are saying and your rooms and the rooms that um, that I host with Claire and my own room, which is called Pour at Four on a Friday. It's truly, Pour at Four is all about going to the pub after work when you fully deserve to go up to to the pub after work on a Friday. I love the spaces where you can talk openly and freely about your achievements, about your challenges, and where it is all about trying to add value and connect with other people who are in a similar space to you. I actually like the intimate rooms that are, you know, under 50 people, the ones that where everyone can come up on stage and really feel that they've got a safe space to say what they, they want to and where they have listened really hard to what somebody else said. And they're saying, I, I love it when someone comes on stage and says, I just want to pick up on something that Danusha said you know, about 20 minutes ago, she said mm. something and I just want to talk about that again because it really hit hard for me and I fully agree. And because rather than those ones where everyone just comes up onto stage for the five minutes of fame, does that make sense? Oh, completely. The, the kind of elevator pitch moment that kind of just lands it in the room and then they either disappear or they're disconnected from really what's going on. So it's it's the difference, isn't it, between throwing your business card, you know, opening a door of a meeting, chucking your business cards in and going, here, have these, mm-hmm. and actually walking in the room and, and getting to know people and listening and and being of value. And there's a lot of value, isn't there, on Clubhouse. And then there's there's a there's just a lot of chucking around of business cards. And I think, you know, we we can learn. We can learn from all of this about who we are, what we want. And and for me, well, 
time is, I mean, for all of us, time is incredibly precious. We know that. And I, I, I like to consider how discerning I am every day when I'm, when I'm on Clubhouse, you know, is this what I really want to be doing with my time? Mm-hmm. Is this a room that has a feel and a, just the, the, the feel in my soul, the kind of feel in my heart of, is this, is this a place for me? And it's not, is this a place for me to get up on the stage? It's, is this a place that I want to be in? Just, just, you know, like literally opening a room and going, hmm, what's going on in there? Oh, that's probably not for me right now. And there are other rooms. Oh my God. I've had some very funny experiences on Clubhouse. Really funny experiences, actually. I was in a a silent room the other day. For listeners who aren't on Clubhouse, please, please be in touch with me. Uh, I've got lots of invites at the moment. And if I haven't got one, I'm sure we can, you know, uh, we know enough people. I want to make this as an inclusive as possible. So, but, but there's these silent rooms, aren't there, Susie, where people just sit. So you go in them and then you take a look around, but there's no talking. And I was in this particular room the other day where the guy who's running it couldn't stop talking and he couldn't stop talking about it being a silent room. And I, <laughs> I'm listening to this, killing myself laughing because it wasn't a silent room. So, and then when he explained that it was a silent room and he went on for about 10 minutes, uh, someone else came in to say, oh, thank you so much for providing this silent room. And before you know it, you've got this kind of, this weird domino effect of someone else saying, I really love what she just said to thank you for this silent room. And so it wasn't a silent room at all. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, it was hilarious. It was the funniest thing. One of the more troubling ones was <laughs> when I went into a room which was, I think would have probably been something like 12, one o'clock in the morning on a Friday night. And it was, and it was, um, and I have, have to say, I, I don't um, encounter these rooms too much, uh, but I, I don't know what the title was of this room, but um, I think it was probably singles mingling or something like that. And I thought, oh, well, that could be fun. And unfortunately it was, it, it was, um, Get up on stage and say say who you'd like to fuck. Look around the room and and name the person that you would you'd like to fuck. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and I just honestly, Susie, I was like, am I hearing this right? Am I actually hearing this right that people are going to look around the room and go, Gina, I'd like to fuck you. I would. I do you. <laughs> and then Gina would say, oh, let me look at you a minute. Hmm. Well, I suppose I I might. <laughs> <laughs> and it's honestly so funny. I came out of that room very fast, I should say. Yes. <laughs> but, but I realized this was just, that's all it was going to be. Literally all it was going to be. And I just thought, no, there's a case in point. That's not going to nourish me. No, exactly. It's a funny story, but it's d- not building my resilience, not building who I am, not contributing to my, and not everything has to. It can just be simply funny. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say, you know. You make a point that I think um, it is another way, I think, that I've managed to cope and keep going. And, you know, it's over the last year or so, I, I think I've taken a lot more notice and of my own intuition, you know, and my own gut feeling. Um, yes. And sometimes in the busyness of it all, you don't get a chance to do that. You kind of just roll with what other people are doing. You can, you know, be swayed into this and that. And I think um, one of the, what I mean, that I actually do believe that there have been plenty of benefits of the pandemic as well as the challenges. I really do. It's given me mm. space. I do see it as a gift of time that I've had with my children. There are, I won't go into it, but I actually think there's a lot of benefits. I've, mm. I've started running um, and I'll talk about it in a minute, but I also have managed to pivot business. But one of the things that I really have done in this time of, of of slowing down a little bit is actually had a chance to stop and think do you like that do you like that person do you want to listen to this do you want to be in that room do you like being on facebook not much actually um do you want to show up at that event when we can when the restrictions are lifted are you going to go out with those girls again were you just doing it because you didn't want to be left you know it's given me a really good chance to look at things and go actually, I don't think I like that. Like exactly what you're saying. Like if I, if I pop into a room, but I don't want to speak, I think in the past, even at times now, because, you know, Clubhouse hasn't been around all that long, really. 
Um, sometimes I do get in there and sometimes I just don't feel like speaking, but I have felt a little bit of a pressure. Ooh, better better get up on stage, better show that I'm willing. I don't know, maybe I'm just get, becoming a bit more of an ass, but part of me just thinks, nah, I don't know if I really want to. And, and, and actually I'm okay with that. Um, it's like, you know, no, it's, it's not picking my battles, but it's just choosing a bit more cleverly about what makes me sing and ting and shine mm. and, um, and and not necessarily being drawn in to saying, oh, well, actually, Steve looks good. I'd, I'd fuck you, <laughs> you know, just because. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Well, well, the p- pandemic for many people that have been speaking to me throughout it for this podcast and the School for Fathers podcast, I mean, they, they've been talking very much about the fact that it has, despite all the challenges, given the opportunity to and because of the challenges, given the opportunity to life audit. Yeah. Some people haven't had that space because not everybody has been at home. Not everybody has had that chance to take more stock. It, it just hasn't been that experience, certainly for the frontline working um, people, of which there are many, many mothers. And and so this audit, though, for lots of people has been possible. And I think you're talking about, I hear you being more discerning. I hear you saying you have a, a different take on the kind of currency of life in a way that it's, it is very precious, that it is, it's very fleeting. You know, it's so fleeting, our experience. And therefore, she, how you, how you best use your time and energy and who you spend it with is crucial. I mean, we've, we've had it all taken away to be able to put it back at some point. Yeah. So best we treat it like it's a gift. It's a, it's a really good part of building up your resilience because there's nothing worse is there than, well, I, I don't know if it's nothing worse, but there's certainly damaging to be around people who actually, I don't know, just, um, what's the word, deplete us? Absolutely. Drains. Yeah. Drain. I think I've become mm-hmm. really, really aware over the last couple of years, but I think even more so throughout this pandemic of Spending time with people who do just leave me drained. It seems that I um, have had more headspace and, and ability to see and feel really what's going on. And I found myself actually over the last few months um, just really by accident, really, but, but probably deliberately as well, just p- pulling away from the people that I know, as you said, deplete me um, and don't fire me up with energy because I am somebody who I wear my, I wear my heart on my sleeve and literally my emotions are, you know, you can read me like a book. Um, and I do find that I can be a proper emo- emotional roller coaster, and I need people who fill me up and keep me buoyant. And I can, I can very easily be depleted by people who just like moan in a negative and um and, and in the same way I, I like to try and shine my light on those people but some people don't want to be filled up and I have really noticed that and I think it's as you said it's been a bit, bit more discerning about who do you spend your time with and how do I spend it and I've I actually um really I had the time during the first lockdown last summer to really stop and think about how I was running my business and I don't think I'd even had a given myself a moment to think about it before and I realized actually that the way that I was running my business the way I was approaching the revenue side of it actually was not filling me up it was not giving me energy and it wasn't exciting and it was a massive moment for me actually when I realized the big moment was when lockdown started to end and they gave gave a date that when things were going to start to open instead of actually feeling super happy about that and I should be the one person um, well not the one person but of the people who should be happy it definitely should be me I my whole business lives and dies on whether or not attractions and businesses are open for visiting and I found myself actually really not that happy that places were starting to open that lockdown was being lifted and I had to have a really bloody good talk to myself about what was going on mm. um, I found it I was, I was quite surprised and what I realized and it has happened again this time actually as well is that I wasn't excited about going back into the way that I was running my business before it wasn't actually serving me it wasn't doing me any favors I had devalued myself offering myself at a price that was not reflective of how awesome my platform is and how great I can be for businesses. And as you'll see that I'm using language to build myself up there because I can I'm really conscious of it. 
And I, it was a really pivotal moment. And basically during that first lockdown, I had an opportunity to change everything, to reset my prices and to do everything differently. And actually to think about how some of the, not only the people that I was seeing and the, and the way I was spending my time, but almost from a business perspective as well, that I was making sure that I spent the way I was running my business and that time in a way that was really positive and building my energy and serving me. And I've, as I said, it's happened again this time because I felt a little bit unexcited as well about the prospect of things opening. But again, it's just given me that chance to take some stock about the way I was approaching it and make a decision about, is this actually, is that the right way or is there something better? Yeah, this this up-leveling our, our systems, our pricing, our, our business processes and and the well the very the kind of very foundations of our business, that's that has for many people been been kind of put on the table because it's because you can, because for some, you know, like self, you have been able to. It's it's a fascinating one, isn't it? Because I'm wondering if if your what you've put in place this time is is it getting closer and closer to what you want? Or, and, because it can be both, couldn't it? it? Is it that you're morphing your offering? You know, like, is, is something fundamentally changing mm. in what you're doing? So this last lockdown, I have created two brand new arms of my business. So mm-hmm. the truest sense of it is that I have um, a platform, Wiki Place for the Kids, a trip advisor of parents looking for things to do, an app which will um, hopefully be a game changer for parents coming out of lockdown. Um, it will ping you to let you know what places are open, what safety measures they have in place with the ultimate goal of getting the UK's businesses, economy and families back on their feet. It's a community platform and it will you know, if, if we all step in and support, we'll all have these amazing places to go. And, um, you know, in, in doing so, we'll be contributing, obviously, to footfall and the economy and all that. That's the main bulk of it. But with this constant pandemic situation that we're in, and who knows whether we're not going to have another lockdown or not, but um, it's out of my control. And that was what was so difficult, uh, is having my business removed and put back into place completely out of my control. So during this lockdown, I... Well, in the first one, I slightly pivoted um, and built the apps and um, and responded to the fact that obviously place people wanted to know actually what's open and what safety measures. And that was the first thing. And that was not a proper game changer, but that was a big step. And that was a, a nice change. But this time, um, having been a bit frustrated with some of the networks I've been in previously, um, support networks, business networks, etc., I just thought, you know what, fuck it, I'm building my own. And I just, on, on a whim, I created a link. I sent it to 40 women who are my mum friends in business. They all have small businesses or entities that they're building or missions of their own. And I just went out and I built it. And now it's a thriving, engaged community of women. Um, We support each other. It's all about growing together. It's about um, being stronger together and we all rise together. It's about true collaboration um, in a way that I don't always see women wanting to support other women. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I see um, proper competition and actually that isn't that sad. It, isn't that sad though? It really is. It's, it's horrible. And, and I've spent a lot of money in networks where I felt that like I was going to get that it was going to build my business. And actually it isn't, it has never done that. So I just thought that's it screw it, I'm building something where that is the proper, true essence of what it is. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I get so much energy from working with these amazing, inspiring women. And I met you, Danusha, through this because I reconnected with my wonderful friend, Claire, who I worked with previously, um, who you know, of course. And look at what I feel that this is, um, it's actually offering so many incredible opportunities for my business. And yet it was something almost completely separate and different. And I do believe that in time it will become a, 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 an income stream for me as long as it continues to add the value that it's adding now. Mm. And I just love it. And another thing is that I realized that I had something to offer in terms of my um, experience on Instagram and social media. So I built a community of 18,000 parents and I just... I think I hadn't fully appreciated that the knowledge and the time and, and what I could offer someone else. So now I also offer one-to-ones 
to people who are new to Instagram or small businesses or anybody that just wants to sort of up level um, their Instagram a bit. And so I, I started in the last two, this lockdown, these other two little entities, which I am so proud of and I get so much energy from them. Um, and it has really made me think, hmm, you weren't really getting this much energy that you're getting now from that other thing that you were doing. But I still actually, I fully love doing the other thing as well. And, and I just think what's happened is that I've been punched super hard quite a few times this year and even before um, this year with that other uh, wiki mm. um, entity. You know, obviously the pandemic has just crushed me three times and it's just super hard to keep rebuilding. Um, but I do believe now that, you know, this, this summer, you know, from Easter onwards, there's going to be a huge opportunity again for my, these platforms to make a massive difference to parents across the UK and hopefully to the businesses themselves. And, and, it, and I do believe that there's, it's, it's, a, it's a super thing um, and I, 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 I do have a lot of belief in it. It just sounds like I don't, but I really do. It, um, it's just that, um, and obviously with all new things, new things that bring you energy, they kind of distract you a little. But, um, mm. but I, I just think... I've now got more to bring to the table than I had pre-pandemic. And that's why, I, I, again, I see the time as a gift. I think, I think it's uh, for a really long time, I had been asking the world to stand still and let me catch up. And this last year has actually done that for me. I, again, got what I asked for. Because once again, careful what you wish for. Um, I got it. But it really has served me and, you know, and lots of other things as well and where we connected with my children. And, and I, I do think it's also allowed my husband and I to find a new way of, of um, you know, swimming together. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like out, born out of your need to overcome challenge after a challenge after challenge after challenge in your central business, you've, you've created these other pieces that actually fundamental fundamentally feed into your energy and and will and have a life of their own and and uh, you know kind of fire you up that then feeds back into your main business and that's that's incredible i mean we've got you know showing up for yourself in so many different ways leaning into your spirituality and reconnecting with that, trusting the universe, you know, being the light, bringing positivity, like being intentional about that, using using language really carefully, like just putting your attention on language. How are you using attention, you know, language? How, how are we each doing that? What does that create for ourselves and for the world? Discerning who we spend time with. And, and really all of these things sound like they're, mechanisms and tools to actually kind of piece by piece build confidence and resilience in incredibly demanding times. It's not one kind of, oh, I do this to make sure that I can over challenges. It's overcome our, our challenges. It's it's a host of things, isn't it? It's a medley. It's all the small things. It really is. I think, as you say, I, I said to my network this morning, um, I said, my challenge to you today is be unapologetically clear about your needs and ask of the universe be really clear what do you want what do you need say it loud and clear put it on the universe's to-do list and just trust it's being done and you can do that with all the small things you can do that with how you know if you say, say to yourself i want to feel creative today i want to come up with something amazing put it out there trust and then just wait for that download it's something that I'm trying to do every day, set your intentions and be clear, but it doesn't have to be about business. It doesn't have to be about money no. or creativity. It can literally be about, I want my child to enjoy school today. I want them to come out beaming and then almost just trust that that's in place. Don't sit there and worry about it all day because you can eat yourself up with that kind of worry. Um, mm. It's about totally that there is something maybe bigger at play and that it, he, she, it has your back. I, and I, I just, I don't know, I just feel so happy and gifted to have that trust. I really do. What a bloody brilliant conversation. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been adorable, practical, really equipping. I, I mean, just like skills equipping. It's, it's just the whole shebang. Thank you. Thank you for your lovely, big, amazing heart. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I could talk to you all day, Danusha, but thank you so much for having me. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you did, I'd love to hear from you. You can leave a rating and a review over on Apple Podcasts, 
or email me on hello at schoolformothers.com. That's hello at schoolformothers.com. Well, that's all for now, listeners. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a fantastic week and, of course, stay safe. Sending you lots of love. Thank you for tuning in to the School for Mothers podcast. To continue the conversation and keep your dose of inspiration up, head over to schoolformothers.com forward slash podcast where you'll find bonus content from Danusha and her guests on habits, recommendations, books, best apps, time-saving secrets, life hacks, health, sleep and anything in between. That's schoolformothers.com forward slash podcast. 